friends, and welcome to Family Storytime. My name is Mr. Mackay, and we're going to have a blast today learning about dinosaurs. Roar! I'm excited about dinosaurs. I hope you are. But before we can do that, we have to sing hello to all of our friends. Are you ready? I'm ready. Here we go. We clap and sing hello. We clap and sing hello. For in the friends are story time. We clap and sing hello. We wave and sing hello. We wave and sing hello. With our friends at story time, we wave and sing hello. We stomp and sing hello. We stomp and sing hello. With our friends at story time, we stomp and sing hello. Good job, friends. Excellent job. You did great. Now, I want to tell you all about our discovery pass. Oh my goodness, this is so much fun. All of the museums that you see on your screen, you can get two free passes to go to. All you need is your special library card. And all you have to do is go to hcplc.org slash services slash discovery pass. And once you do that, you can have your two tickets to go enjoy any of the museums you see on your screen. So hurry up, get that library card, and get those tickets today. Now it's time for us to learn our sign language of the day and our Spanish of the day. So our sign language of the day is all done. So we're going to take our two high fives and we're going to face us. Now, we're going to take our two high fives and we're going to go all done. We're just going to turn them the other way. All done. All done. All done. We're showing we have nothing in our hand or we're finished eating. Good job. Excellent. Now, it's time for our Spanish word of the day. And our Spanish word of the day is dinosaurio. Dinosaurio. That's dinosaur in Spanish. Dinosaurio. Good job. Excellent job. Good job. Now, it's time for our first story together. And our first story together is... The Dinosaur Who Discovered Hamburgers. Author, Edison Books. Publisher, independently published. Scout loved being a dinosaur. Of course, being a dinosaur had its perks. Dinosaurs were able to run fast and roar louder and were the strongest animals in all the land. But the best part of being a dinosaur was that they were all big foodies. They loved going out to restaurants and enjoyed eating different foods. There were lots of different dishes to choose from. Sushi, chicken nuggets, and pizza, and more. But Scout always felt like there was a great dish that was still missing. Scout packed his binoculars, a magnifying glass, a plate, a knife, a spoon, a fork, and a map. Scout searched far and wide, venturing through treacherous terrain. 
Scout climbed the highest mountains, clothed the hottest deserts. <gasps> Ew, it's hot. And wade through the thickest swamps. Scout was exhausted and ready to give up, just as Scout was about to turn back. A strange forest appeared into view. It seemed the forest had oddly shaped fruit. Scout used the binoculars to look closer. Of course, this was a bread forest. It was filled with bread buns as far as the eye could see. Toasted buns, sesame buns, brioche buns. Scout grabbed some and continued on. Scout left the forest and entered a valley filled with beautiful flowers. But again, something was odd about these flowers. Scout took out the magnifying glass and took a closer look. It looked like the petals of these flowers were made of pickles. Of course, these were pickle flowers. Scout grabbed some and continued on. Scout kept walking and came across two strange rivers. One river was red and the other was yellow. Scout got close to the rivers and took out the spoon. Scout dipped the spoon into each river and had a taste. One was sweet and one was sour. Of course, these were the great rivers of ketchup and mustard. Overjoyed, Scott packed some of each. Scott continued on and wandered by some large bushes that had a wonderful aroma. Scout reached into the backpack, pulled the fork and knife, and started to poke into the bushes. Out came a meat patty and a slice of bacon, grilled to perfection. Of course, these were bacon and patty bushes. Scout now had lots of ingredients and flavors to work with and started to head home, passing back through the river of ketchup and mustard, walking again through the fields of pickled flowers, trekking once more through the bread forest. Wading back through the thickest swamps, recrossing the hottest <sighs> desert, and climbing back down the highest mountains. Scout, finally at home, went into the kitchen and began to plan the meal. Scout tried many different combinations, but none of them seemed right. Then it came to Scout. Of course, we have a bun, ketchup, pickles, bacon, patty, mustard, and another bun. The perfect order for the perfect dish. Now, to taste our creation. Scout took a bout. It was good, but it still felt like something was missing. So Scout decided to visit Dr. Ham.
the smartest dinosaur scientists in town to see what they could come up with together. Dr. Ham showed Scout the newest technology in food processing. Scout took and watched Dr. Ham team tool and tinker with their formulas to come up with just the right addition to the dish. The machines hummed, the breakers boiled, and the gauges whirred. Voila! After the smoke cleared, all the dinosaurs looked upon their creation and wonder. With the new creations ready for tasting, Dr. Ham began official scientific test. I'll call this red ball with seeds. This one will be named white spicy oval that makes you cry. This shall be called crunchy green leaves. Scout thought the names were a little too long and suggested they name them tomato, onion, and lettuce instead. The other dinosaurs agreed and were amazed at Scout's genius. Scout took slices of the new foods and added them into the dish. Of course! This is what was missing. Scout tasted the creation and knew this was the perfect dish. Mm. Scout shared this discovery with the other dinosaurs who all agreed that they loved this dish. Scout, thankful for all of Dr. Ham's help decided to name the dish after the doctor. What is your full name, Dr. Ham? My full name is Dr. Ham Berger the 12th. I come from a long line of burgers. It was settled. The new dish will be called Hamburger. All the dinosaurs loved eating Scout's new dish, even the Velociraptor. Food Guy gave it six claws way up. News of the dish spread quickly and everyone had to try it. It was a hit. The dish was so popular that the dinosaurs even made an international hamburger day. Even movies were made to show how this amazing new dish was discovered. Scout felt happy and complete. The perfect dish was found and all was right in the world. The end. Yay! Everybody, yay! Good job for reading that with me, friends. Now, it's time for our letter of the day. And what is our letter of the day, friends? That's right. It's D. And what sound does D make? D, D, D. Excellent, excellent. Let's see what words we can learn. What is that? A dog. What sound does the dog make? Woof, woof, woof. Excellent job. And what is that? That is a dartboard. Good job. Those are darts. And who is that? We just learned about that, friend. A dinosaur. Good job. So what was our letter for today? 
D, excellent. Good job, friends. And what are those? Dice. Excellent job. We learn numbers with dice. Good job. Now, we're going to do some singing together, friends, okay? And we're going to sing our numbers together. So it's very important that we use our digits with this one, okay? Because we want to get used to learn using our digits for those fine and gross motor skills. All righty? Here we go. One little, two little, three little dinosaurs, four little, five little, six little dinosaurs, seven little, eight little, nine little dinosaurs, ten little dinosaurs roar so loud. Good job. Excellent. Good job, friends. Excellent job. Now, it's time for our next story. And our next story is Tiny T-Rex and the Impossible Hug. I have tiny arms. It is very difficult to hug with tiny arms. Each day, I am growing taller. But... My arms are still tiny. Hugging almost seems impossible for a Rex as tiny as me. But I will try anyway. Pointy needs me. Where is my father? I will ask him for advice. Hello, father. Rexuses are thinkers, not huggers. Perhaps instead of hugs, mathematics might be the answer to your problem. Pointy does not like math. Math will only make Pointy feel worse. Hello, Auntie Jumpy. I have a problem. I must learn how to hug, but my arms are too tiny. I have found that balance is the key to every problem. Balance and freshly squeeze cucumber juice. That is disgusting. I will ask my mother for help instead. I have fallen and now I am lost. I do not think I will find my mother in here. Hello, mother. It's okay if you can't hug, Tiny. You are good at many other things. You are kind and creative and braver than most. You are tiny but your heart is big. I cannot hug with my heart, mother. I must learn to hug with my arms. Hello, sister. Hello, brother. Please help me. Hugging is very difficult. We love to help, Tiny. To do the impossible, you must plan and practice. Practice, practice, practice. Thank you. Rexy and Roxy, that is good advice. Wham! I will plan my strategy. I will get stronger. I will practice very hard. I will practice my hugs on everything. I will not practice on that anymore. <laughs> I am almost ready. I will practice 
one more time. When I'm done, I will find my friend. This tree is very big, like pointy. I will hug it. This is not a tree. I have made a mistake. Please help. From up here, everything looks tiny, like me. I could hug anything I want. Now I'm falling. I should have not let go. Now I will never find Pointy. Oh, hello, Pointy. Hi, Tiny. I'm here to make you feel better. I have practiced very hard and hugged many things. My arms are still tiny and my hugs are still tiny, but I will do my very best because you are my very best friend. Thank you, Tiny. That was the biggest hug ever. Everybody say yay, excellent job. So little T-Rex, even with his tiny arms, was able to give his friend Pointy the greatest, most friendliest, biggest hug ever. Great job, friends, excellent. Now, we're going to do some singing together, okay? We're going to sing The Dinosaurs Go Marching. And this goes to the tune of The Ants Go Marching. All righty. And we're going to count to three together. Here we go. The dinosaurs go marching one by one. Hurrah, hurrah. The dinosaurs go marching one by one. Hurrah, hurrah. The dinosaurs go marching one by one. The little ones stop, stand in the sun, and they all go marching round and round and up and down. Boom, boom, boom. The dinosaurs go marching two by two. Hurrah, hurrah. The dinosaurs go marching two by two. Hurrah, hurrah. The dinosaurs go marching two by two. The little two stop to admire the view. And they all go marching round and round, up and down. Boom, boom, boom. The dinosaurs go marching three by three. Hurrah, hurrah. The dinosaurs go marching three by three. Hurrah, hurrah. The dinosaurs go marching three by three. The little three stop to eat from the tree and they all go round and round and up and down. Boom, boom, boom. Good job, friend. Excellent job going marching with me. You guys did great. Excellent counting. And we counted to three. Good job. Excellent. Now, we're going to read our last story together. And our last story is Never Ask a Dinosaur to Dinner. Author, Gareth Edwards, publisher, Allison Green Books. Never ask a dinosaur to dinner. Really? Never ask a dinosaur to dinner. Because a T-Rex is furious. And his manners are atrocious. And you'll find that if he's able, he will eat the kitchen table. He'll grow fatter while the rest of you grow thinner. So never ask a dinosaur to dinner. Please don't share your toothbrush with a shark. Really? 
Listen, please don't share your toothbrush with a shark. They've got so many rolls of teeth on the top and underneath. And then any self-respecting shark will want each little tooth to sparkle. If you rush him, he may make a rude remark. So please don't share your toothbrush with a shark. Never let a beaver in the sink. Really? Never let a beaver in the sink. He'll block it up with sticks and mud and turn the taps on till they flood and build a great big beaver dam and fill the whole thing up with salam. With sal men. And the waiter water won't be very good to drink. So never let a beaver in the sink. Never choose a bison for a blanket. Really? Never choose a bison for a blanket. Because although it's warm and woolly, you will find it is a bully. And its hooves will be too clampy. And its horns will make you grumpy. And by morning time, you will not want to thank it. So never choose a bison for a blanket. Please don't let a barn owl in your bed. Really? Please don't let a barn owl in your bed. Because the first thing that you'll learn be a barn owl is nocturnal. She will hunt for mice and hoot all night and leave your bed a dreadful sight. You'll wish that owl was in a barn instead. So, please don't let a barnyard in your bed. Now, here's how you can have a lovely sleep. Really, here's how you can have a lovely sleep. Say no to beaver, shark, and owl. Avoid the tiger in his growl. Stir clear of every dinosaur. Leave bison at the bedroom door. These animals won't help you rest. At bedtime, here's what is best. Stick to one teddy and a flock of sheep. And that's how you can have a lovely sleep. Everybody say yay. Good job, friends. Excellent. Now, we're going to do Dino Diddy together. And this goes to the tune of Do I Diddy Diddy Thumb Diddy Do. Here we go. We're going to try it together. Here he comes stomping with his feet, singing do I diddy diddy dum diddy do. Searching around for something good to eat, singing do I diddy diddy dum diddy do. He's big, he's strong, he's big, he's strong, won't be hungry very long. Singing do a diddy diddy dum diddy do, singing do a diddy diddy dum diddy do. Good job, friends. Excellent job. You did beautiful. Now, I want to let you guys know about our Every Child Ready to Read skill, which is playing 
Read, write, talk, sing, play. Read, write, talk, sing, play. Read, write, talk, sing, play. Growing readers day by day. So, playing is an awesome way to help our littles build their confidence, self-esteem, agility, and self discipline. Now, while we're out playing freely with all of our things and all of our friends, we want to make sure we're using our instincts, our imagination to include in our interests as well. And also, as big people, we want to make sure we're showing our littles what they should be doing while they're playing, because our littles learn by our example. Now, I want to let you guys know to go down below and download our family story time weekly activities for you guys. It has the rhymes, coloring sheets, the letter of the day as well. Now, we're going to sing our goodbye song together and I'm excited about it. Are you ready? I'm ready. Here we go. The more we get together, 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 the more we get together, the happier we'll be. Cause your friends are my friends and my friends are your friends. The more we get together, the happier we'll be. Good job, friends. Excellent job. You guys did beautiful reading with me today. And next week, we're going to learn about community heroes. So if you guys have any questions or concerns, you can contact us at the information on your screen. Until next time, bye-bye.